up to his feet is it's either did they say Gano or Gonot? I don't know. I, I went with Gonot. Gonot, all right. Gonot's up and out for the escape. He leads one nothing. Ten seconds. Now front headlock here. We're gonna get a stall warning on Gwinnott. 18 seconds to go, and getting the escape is Deputy. Right back in on the leg is Gwinnott. 13 seconds to go. Well, they didn't award an escape. They did not award a point. Wow. And that was that. Is that it? That is. They did not award a point for escape. I thought they had totally the set. There's a single leg attempt by Williams. He's in deep, and he comes around and finishes the takedown. They'll take a 2 nothing lead. Off the whistle. This is uh, Williams. He took down to start the period. Now into a switch, and Williams comes around to take a 4 to nothing lead after the reversal. Right off the bat, Granby roll by Maul, and he's going to get away for an escape. So 4-1 to one the score. Maul immediately comes back. He's going to have to bail out. We're going to get a possible reversal here maybe for Maul. But re- grabbing the leg is Williams, and he's going to give it up. So it's 4-3 to three now, and if you're Easton Maul, you've got a th- Williams. Now he's going to try to get it head in the side, down to 19 seconds to go. There's Williams up to his feet. He's leading by two now. Comes in, catches an underhook. 5-3. With 10 seconds to go in favor of Williams. There's a shot by Maul, and he can't get to the legs. Four seconds to go. And Jordan Williams of Chartier Houston, your champion at 114 pounds, right back here on Green Sports. Here we had escape for Wolf on mat number one. Little Sledzianowski, late single leg, and he's going to get the takedown right at the end of the first period. He's up to his feet. Tries to cut away. Sledzianowski drops down on the waist but lets him go. 3-0 the score now in favor of the Bishop. There's an ankle pick again by Sledzianowski, and he's going to finish that takedown and take a 5-0 lead over Bainey. That lead, still 20 seconds to go in their match. Sledzianowski now looking for a tilt, and he's getting it. Got near fall on Bainey. Going to lengthen his lead out. Here by Flo at his... Um, at this weight class here, comes against Vargo, and he right away goes into a Merkel and gets a takedown on that left side. Vargo. Slow begin a scoreless draw after the first minute of the first period in his matchup on mat number three. Well, there's double kill Vanilla. Vargo. Oh, and he hit the headlock! He's got him on his back! He's got Jax Forrest on his back! This would be huge! He's got it tight. Chris Fargo looking for the fall. He's on the side of the mat with his headlock wrapped up. Waiting for the slap of the mat. He's got it tight. We've got 16 seconds to go as Forrest tries to roll all the way through, and he's going to off the side of the mat. This crowd is going crazy. For the PIAA fans around here. Up to his feet is Forrest. He's going to get the escape at 6-3. Beginning of the second period. Forrest comes in on an ankle. It's a 3-2 lead over McGuffey. Double leg. The bar. Fargo in deep again on the double. Looking to finish this takedown. That should be. It's close. He's trying to step over the leg. Forrest bails out. It's another takedown for Chris Fargo. He leads 8-3. He puts into. He steps into a Turk. But he got a little high there. Almost got near fall. Granby rolled by Forrest through to the other side. Vargo catches him again, almost on his back. This is crazy action here on mat number two. They're still rolling around. Now he's got him on his back again. He's got more near fall coming. Still more near fall for Vargo. This gym will erupt if this keeps going this way. It's 11 to three in favor of Vargo. Lead for Vargo of Bentworth. He's in on a double leg again, but stopped with the front headlock. Now, there's Forrest again trying to grow through, and he's got to be close to this takedown. There's two for Forrest. It's 11 to 5. One was a stall warning for against Forrest. Now a shot by Vargo. He's he didn't get to the legs, and this might be another takedown for Jax Forrest. He does. 40 seconds to go. It's 12 to 7. And Forrest has to come up with something that he hasn't really had There's to do one all point year. With an escape, 13 to 7. Chris Vargo is going to do it. 
Time winds down and this gym is going crazy. Chris Vargo wins 13 to seven over Jax Forrest and he is your champion at 127 pounds. We'll be right Alice. And just as I say that, Gibson, quick snap down, go around behind, leads 2 0. That gives up the escape, it's 2 1. Gazalis trying to get right back in and overpowered there by Gibson with that underhook, and he gets another takedown. It's 4 1, now 4 2 with the escape. Another throw by, by Gibson. He's going to get another takedown to make it 6 2. After one, it's scoreless between Centipal and Shunk for third place. Gibson goes around behind again for another takedown to make it eight to three. It's back in. Oh, almost able to hip Shunk over to his back. As there's an escape by Gibson, and he's close to getting another takedown, but Cazales hanging on to a leg. Yeah, Centipal currently has a 3-1 lead in his matchup on mat number four. Gazalis trying to get to a leg, but can't against Gibson. They're at the end of two periods over there on mat number four, and it will be Centipal's yes. choice. Uh, over on four, it's Gavin Suica taking okay. on a Phillipsburg Osceola wrestler. Okay, as Bassett gets around behind for a two-point takedown on Hornack, so we'll keep an eye on Suica as well. That is the third-place bout for... Bassett. Bassett snaps down to the head, and he gets around behind for another takedown. Make I think, for the escape. Still no escape awarded yet to Hornack. Now there is. Four to two, and under a minute to go in the first period. He pulls on an elbow for a drag attempt and tries to come around behind again, and he does. It's six to two Bassett over Hornack. Go out here and trying to. Get in on the legs, but can't right now. Another front headlock by Bassett, and he's going to try to get around behind again, and does. Eight to three, 30 seconds to go in the first. The legs, but Bassett too quick and comes around. He locks up a near side cradle. Bassett trying to, he's got it over. He's got the takedown, and he's trying to take Hornack to his back and does, and so now he's getting near fall, and Bassett looking for the fall. Bo Bassett has this cradle pretty tight, and... That is it. Bo Bassett, your champ at 139 pounds by the fall over. Not working. Not working, yeah. So, or at least out of this gym it's not. They, they said it was a flow thing. I don't think it was. Oh, wow, what a takedown by Butler there. Came in on the fireman's carry and gets a quick two. Kind of caught Ipsic by surprise. Ipsic up to his feet now, trailing two to nothing, but chopped back down. Wow, there's a quick turn with the bar by Butler, and he's got a couple near fall coming. And they go out of bounds, so all of a sudden, 4-0 for Jackson Butler. Well, to your point. This time, Ivsik can't fight it off as the, the well, he's still not given. Now he's going to take him all the way over, still scrambling here, and he's going to have to dive out. And There's a fireman's carry attempt as well. It started by, dives in on a leg. Now trying to switch to a double, and he does, and he's going to get a takedown. So it's 6-3 now, a minute 30 left. Ivsik's going to have to cut him loose, and he's going to need a few. He's still got that knee, t or that elbow tight. It's going to get Ipsic down. Ipsic is going to get taken down again, make it 7 to 5. Or sorry, 9 to 3, rather. 9 to 3, and now he's going to try to elevate that leg. 38 seconds to go. Ipsic is going to get taken down again. It's 11 to 4. And that's not a way to start anything. Oh, he gets him back down to the mat. Now Miller is up and out for the one point escape. 15 seconds into the period. Now up to his feet is Hoover. Works on the wrist and gets away. 1-1. One one. Hoover right in on a single. Couldn't single leg by Miller. He's in deep on it, and he shelves it. And he trips down to Hoover, and Hoover's going to get taken down right at the end. I was just Six about, seconds to go. I was just about to say, 15 seconds is an eternity on a day like this, and that's the reason why as Melvin Miller comes. Here on mat number two, there's a shot attempt by Pisano. Couldn't get to it, but now counters. Comes right in behind Magro and gets a takedown. Two to nothing, Pisano. Mag now throw by attempt by Magro right here at the end. Four seconds left. He's going to get a late two. Wow, that's a big two points for Magro. Magro tries to get him back down. A switch attempt by Magro on the way down, and he gets the escape. 
three or four to two rather now in favor of Magro. Get us. Well, no, as I say that, the position changes a bit. Magro trying to power through again, and he's going to get two right at the edge of the mat again. Six to two, Magro. Now, two going to collide right at the center of the mat. Now it's Magro in on a single, and he's going to get the double leg takedown finish again. Eight to two. Eight to three after the escape. Another single leg by Magro, and he's going to finish this one, looks like, and he does. Makes it 10 to 3. He's going to get taken down again. It's 14 to 5. Major decision territory for Magro. 14 to 6. Pisano tries to dive back in and can't get to a leg. Take down again. 17 6 in favor of Magro. 27 seconds remaining. And really the only points that Pisano can get right now are these escapes that Magro, quite frankly, is just letting him have. And out of bounds. With the, well, no, they didn't go out of bounds, but it's two-point takedown again. It's 19. Welsh now trying to lock around, and he's getting dangerously close to being reversed. And refs are going to talk about it. Two-point reversal right at the edge of the mat for Elijah Brown with a minute five to in. Switches to the double. Very close. That should be two, and it is. Tied it up. 117 to go. And there's a duck under attempt by Brown right at the edge. Gets in on the leg, trying to hang out there to kill this time. 12 seconds to go. Welsh locked through the crotch. Tries to throw Brown all the way over. Now trying to pass the ankle. He's down to four seconds. He's going to run out of time, and it's going to be Elijah Brown, your champ. At 172 pounds over Braden Welsh, who's the runner-up. We'll right Angelo and Daniels over on mat four. He's close trying to sit out. He does get the escape. one nothing in the championship out with a minute and a half to go in. Angelo and Daniels. Snap down, go around behind by Close. He's got a leg here. Still no takedown, but now he's going to finish. 3 nothing. Caleb Close. Ramby attempt by McMonagle and staying with him is close, but now McMonagle does get out for the escape to make it 3-1. to one. That's a big point, too. S single leg attempt by McMonagle and close trying to fight this off with the cross face. McMonagle, though, is going to tie this up with a takedown. We're tied at three with a minute 17 to go. That's where that escape comes in handy because without that, you're looking at a 3-2 deficit. Well, yeah. now it cuts him loose almost. Now he does. So now four to three, close in favor. In favor of close, he's back. And that'll be it. Five three, the final. Caleb Close, your champ, at 189 pounds. We'll watch the end. Rune Lawrence going for his fourth state title this year. He's in on a freight train, freight train double leg and gets the takedown. They go out of bounds with him. 41 minute to West Virginia to wrestle for the Mountaineers. Comes up around the head and just going to run this bar over. He's looking for the fall already. Rune Lawrence gets the fall, and that one comes at 41 seconds. He's your champ. Turn 15 the pounds. championship bout on Matt, too. Yeah, Morgan and Pitzer. I'm not convinced it's a flow issue here because flow's working everywhere else. It's, wow, what a quick takedown by Morgan. And now he looks like he wants to let Pitzer up. 2 nothing as he got off that single leg. 2-1 to one now at the escape. He's almost tempting Pitzer wow. to come at Look him. Look at that. Right on the single leg and use that head to pressure down. And, Pitt, and he's given up some size to Dylan Pitzer. Now a stall warning against Pitner, Pitzer because he wouldn't turn into Morgan. He gets an escape point. Morgan powers through again. Brennan Morgan of Central Valley just division, you know, and, and he's just so aggressive and takes it to his wow. opponent no matter what. My goodness. Another head pressure on that single that just really opened things up. And he into Baronic on Matt Four. That's in the third Great. place consolation. They're nothing, nothing halfway through the first. Does Morgan have the fall here already? Looking for it. Brennan Morgan has Pitzer turn. He's got the double arm bar trying to sit out. He's going to get three near fall at the very least. And he already leads 8-3 to three without that near fall. And now he tries to readjust. So he'll get the near fall added. 11-3 to three your score with 18 seconds to go in the first. Morgan tries to switch off and rolling through his Pitzer. But he gets taken to his back and is going to get taken down 13-3 to three with 50 seconds to go. Now... Sinks back down, grabs the leg of Pitzer, 
Gets a reversal, getting near fall. This might do it. If he's got the two near fall and the reversal, that should wrap it up. That should be it. Yeah, they there, there it is. And so that'll do it. It's 16-3. They're going to add three back points. That makes it 18-3. It should be 19-3, I thought. I thought he had it. Either way, it's a technical it fall is. for Morgan. It is. So he's going to win a technical fall for Brendan Morgan. He is your champ at 285 pounds. Dylan Pitzer, the runner-up out of Mount Pleasant. And we've got the one bout left that we're paying attention to here for Washington County wrestlers, and that is Joseph Baronic 